Hey, what's up? It's Jared. Welcome to another Notion video. Now, I know I've been doing a lot of Notion content lately, and it really is because I want to start out this year as best as I can, organized and ready to go. I did a video uh, right around Christmas on my 2020 goals and how I was going to use Notion to track those goals. And that week between that video being released and the new year, I really have looked at how I'm actually going to pull off some of those goals and how I'm going to keep track of them because I mentioned in my year in preview video where I talk about 2020 I, I talked about how I am the thing that gets in the way most of the time I get sidetracked with new ideas or thoughts or projects and my goals end up being something that I may even forget about total like completely until <laughs> it's later on in the year and I'm reminded oh, oh yeah I was gonna work on that so I really want to avoid that this year that's something that I want uh, to avoid completely because because I want to get these goals achieved. I want them uh, really bad. They're things that I've wanted for a long time. Some of them are newer, some of them are really old. For example, getting my pilot's license. That's something I've wanted to do since I was a child. And I'm finally realizing that dream, and that's a goal for this year. So how am I gonna actually track those things? Now I built this goal tracker, and I talked about it in a previous video, about how we can start goals and kind of move them through the process of completing them, but I, I thought to myself, you know, if I have to take a break from a goal, how am I going to know where I left off? What am I going to be doing periodically through this process so that I'm keeping tabs on my goal and making sure that if I need to jump back in, I know exactly where I was? And not even just that, but so that there's proof for myself that I have actually been doing the work because you know I might get pretty far down a goal and feel a little like bummed because I'm not I haven't completed it yet but I can go back and look and see the progress and so I wanted some stuff like that so let's take a look at that 2020 goal tracker uh, if you watched that video already, then you probably have either built one or saw exactly what I did to build out that 2020 goal tracker. But what I've done is added a lot of really neat little features to my 2020 goal tracker, and I'm going to provide an actual Notion template for you this time so that you can utilize the same setup that I'm using here so you can track your goals all the way through from the idea all the way to a completed goal and have lots of really good information to look back on that shows the progress that you've made. So I still have my 2020 goal tracker here with new goals, uh, a started category, an in progress category, an ongoing and a completed category, and then an on hold one in case I need to take a break from that goal. And so, uh, for example, if I look at the private pilot license, which is the one that I've already kind of started working on, you can see the setup is a little bit different. Now, I, besides just having the title of the goal and where I'm at with that goal, I also have uh, not only the term, whether it's a short term, long term, or a 30 day challenge type of goal, you can see those there, uh, but I also have added a goal type as well and embellished on that a little bit. So I have whether it's an achievement, a habit, or a challenge. And then I have what domain that this falls under. And this is something that I kind of borrowed from the Full Focus Planner, which is a planner that I attempted to use last year and was kind of unsuccessful. I really liked the Full Focus Planner, which is why I decided to subscribe for a full year of planners and go down that road of trying to use the planner. But I didn't like carrying around a book with me all the time and a pen. It seemed like sometimes I would have the book and I couldn't find my pen. And so I couldn't write things down. And I ended up making notes in Evernote and then having to take those notes and put them into the full focus planner. And it just wasn't a good process for me. I needed all of my stuff to be in the digital format so that it was easily accessible and it was on a device that I had with me. I don't like carrying a lot of things with me. So this domain area allows me to categorize what area or aspect of my life that this goal fits into. And it can fit into multiple goals. So as you can see here, it's uh, both avocational, which avocational means something that is like a, ha uh, like a, uh, a hobby or something lightly related to work, but not a vocational type of thing. And then intellectual, because I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot in getting my pilot's license from uh, learning more than I thought I'd ever need to know about weather and stuff like that. So uh, it's both intellectual and avocational. And who knows, it may turn on to something else later on down the road. So I added that as an, uh, something for me to update. 
Now I'm going to skip over status and talk about that here in a second. I have my last active, which is good because every time I make progress, I could change that last activity to a new date. And so that way I'm always looking and able to see when the last time it was that I worked on that goal. Now I also added a started and a completed date as well. So you can see that there. I set the start date so that I know when I started on that goal and then I set the completed date so that I just have those frames of reference and I can see exactly how long it took me um, and just have that information stored there. Now the information that I really changed, the section that I really changed is the body of the page here. So I added a objective and so what is the objective of this goal? Like what is the reason for it to get, a, uh, to get licensed as a private pilot? And then what are my key motivators? This is something else that I borrowed from the full focus planner. And really just that's what I started thinking about this week is, yeah, I've got this goal tracker, but how am I actually going to remind myself of why this is, this is important to me? Keep uh, tabs on this goal and how I'm doing. And it reminded me of the full focus planner. So I borrowed a few things from that and put it in here. So key motivators. I, this is something I want to achieve uh, that I've wanted to do since I was a child. Be able to fly my wife and I somewhere for a night away. It would be a lot of fun. And a hobby that I can share with my kids. So those are three key motivators for getting my pilot's license. Now I also have a getting started section, like what do I need to get started? This also uh, in other goals is a requirements and also is a checklist area. And so right now I just put getting started because I still am in the very early stages of this process. And so I put join online ground school, which is something that I did. I haven't yet bought the study resources online, but that's something that I'm going to need to do soon. And then uh, download practice test apps I've done those, but I haven't like subscribed to them yet and actually done any uh, practice test apps. And then I put in uh, what is the reward for achieving this goal? Uh, I'll fly my wife and I like to Las Vegas for a night or two. Um, so we'll like literally uh, take a plane. Um, I'll probably join like a co-op or something like that. We'll fly to Las Vegas from Modesto, where we currently live. We'll stay a night or two, and then we'll fly home. It'll be a fun adventure and experience. So the reward is always there for me to see and remind me. And in this, that's an easy reward. Like, it's more of just than that. It's like, I'll have my pilot's license. That's the reward in and of itself. But um, that is a tangible thing that I can do and I can reward myself with by saying, doing all this work, getting through this process and everything that it takes to get my license, I will then do this with my wife and share in that experience together. So then if I move down, we have a streak tracker or it could be a, a activity log or something like that. And so what I've been doing is logging whenever I am working on this process here. So you can see I've got uh, ground school section five completed. I did that this morning. I watched a whole bunch of videos um, on ground because I'm doing an online ground school with angleofattack.com. And uh, so I've been logging that. And then I have a link to their website down below in my resources section. So this has really become pretty cool. Now, the really cool thing I want to show you here, which is the status, and you can see it's a thumbs up right now. So let me change the last active to a month ago. So I'm going to go back to like November and then hit done. Now you can see it is a red stop sign. And so if I go back to my goal tracker, you can see I have a red stop sign over private pilot license. So that means that if I go over 30 days without doing anything on one of these goals, I am going to get a, uh, a red light there basically telling me, look guy, you haven't worked on this goal in a while and it's time that you at least look at this goal and think about it. And so basically what I've done here is used a formula that if a uh, date is between now and last activity and it's 30 days, then uh, if it's within that, give the thumbs up. If it's not, give me the uh, traffic light, the red stop sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that put it back on today's date. And that is uh, an aspect that I'm super excited about because now I'm gonna get an easy visual. And that's what I need. I need an easy visual so I can look at it and say, 
oh boy, okay, I haven't worked on that in a little while. Is this goal still important to me? Go look at that reward. Go look at the objective and read those things and think to myself, okay, yeah, it is. It really is still an important goal. It's something that I want to achieve. Okay, what's the next action step that I could take to move forward on that? So let's take a look at this other one uh, that I've updated a couple of times now, which is body fat 10%. That's a uh, physical fitness goal. I've been uh, working out a lot, walking, running, riding a cycling bike. I've been trying to get myself back in shape, and that includes uh, losing some body fat. And I talked about this in my year-end preview. And so if you're more interested in that, go check out that video. But um, there's my key objective, achieve 10% overall body fat. Uh, then I've got some motivators and some requirements, uh, some getting started. And then I updated the streak tracker to include different items, um, which are the actual measurements. I did, in fact, buy a little uh, body fat calipers so that I can measure and keep track of this stuff because I need to see progress. And if I'm not seeing any progress, I can see a measurement progress because, I mean, what's the difference between a 30 millimeter uh, measurement and a 28 millimeter measurement. Like I probably won't visually be able to see that by looking in the mirror, but I'll be able to see progress here. It will get me excited and remind me that I need to not go eat that large pizza or whatever. So um, I'm measuring the three, three spots on my body for this. And then of course there is a link in the resources to a calculator. Um, later on, I'll probably try and figure out how I can do some sort of an equation in here and have it automatically populate the body fat percentage on its own, which would be pretty cool. Right now, that's like all the way over in the right. I need to actually go to my actual desktop computer and kind of restructure the order of these um, uh, of these cells here, of these fields, because I was creating them on my phone uh, the other night. So I have one entry in here from the other night uh, with my weight, and I'm also going to add a photo. And I haven't done that for that first entry, but I'm also going to add a photo so that I have a consistent photo. Because one thing I'm really bad at is tracking stuff like that, the visual aspects. And so this is going to be, you might be thinking at this point, like, wow, guy, you're going way overboard. But for those of you that are super serious about doing something and achieving it, and you're kind of going about it on your own, you need some sort of accountability like this. I don't have a whole bunch of people in my circle of, uh, in my sphere around me that are going to uh, get on me every single day about this, that are going to stay on top of it. Um, maybe I need some people like that, but I just don't have those people right now that have those same goals and can keep me accountable. So that is another example of how I'm using my goal tracker. Uh, then I may go and look at this uh, 40 miles per day on my road bike. That is something that I'm trying to do. I haven't started that yet, but I've started the process on working my way up to being able to do 40 miles in a day. And when I get to that point, then I will go and, uh, and attempt it. So here's one that I actually do have. Uh, a couple of entries in the streak tracker. So I have my first ride. I added, uh, I'll give it a name like first ride or 20 mile, or maybe if I did a, uh, a race using the Zwift app or something like that, or I went on a, a physical ride with some other people uh, outside, then I can give it a name. I've got a difficulty. How hard was it? Was it hard or painful? Was it an easy ride? You know, stuff like that. And then I can also add files, uh, and files can be either a screenshot of the end of the um, uh, of the ride because I'm utilizing the Zwift app, which connects to my bike and gives real feedback and all that stuff and tracks my ride and gives me a simulated ride essentially that I can do just in the other room outside of your camera view here. And so I could put a screenshot in there or something. I can also put the date and time frame that I did the ride. And then I can put uh, average speed, average climb, average distance, notes, what type of ride was it. So you can see here, like I've, I've kind of maybe gotten a little carried away. Uh, but I like having this information. At the end of this, I'm going to be able to look at all of this and say, you know, what is the, uh, the, the distance that I, that I rode over all uh, this time here? So right here under distance where it says calculate, I can choose sum, and now it's showing me how many miles. And then I can choose under climb feet, 
I could put sum and it can put how many feet that I've climbed. And so at the end of this whole thing, I'm going to be able to look at it and say, okay, wow, like I rode that many miles to, through this challenge and I climbed that many feet uh, riding my bike. And then for average speed, I might go and actually choose average instead, because then I can see hopefully my average speed increasing, which means that I'm getting stronger and I'm able to ride faster for a longer period of time. So there's just some really cool things that you're able to do here in Notion to build a habit tracker. And I feel like I've got it pretty well optimized now. I wanted to share it with all of you because I initially built one with you in a video and I've optimized it even further now. And so I've got some resources for you. Of course, I'm going to provide you with the template here, my entire template, so that you can just go and apply it to Notion yourself. Um, or you can, if you haven't watched the first video, you can go back and watch it and build out the initial uh, setup with me in that video. I got in the position of using a lot of templates and then figuring out that, yeah, those templates aren't necessary uh, for me. They don't work as well as I would like them to. And so I end up tweaking them and doing a lot of stuff with them. So install a template, look at how it works, make it your own. Don't feel like you need to use a template exactly how it's designed. So I'm excited to share this with you because I'm going to be referencing this a lot as I talk about my challenges and my goals and stuff like that that I am achieving in 2020. Uh, and even just doing some check-ins from time to time. Uh, I will definitely at least do a quarterly check-in in 2020 where I come back and we go through my goal tracker together and we look at all that has been done in there because I think it's a great way of uh, staying motivated for myself and then also it's just a great way of staying accountable to myself, but also to the things that I've said that I'm going to do. If I'm going to do them and I'm going to tell you about them, then I need to, of course, report back and show you how this has worked for me. So if you're at all skeptical, just wait until the first quarter of 2020 is over and I'll be back with a uh, an overview of what I've accomplished so far. So that's going to do it for this video. I did put up a templates page on my website. You can go to that. The link is down below, uh, jared.blog slash template. You can see all the templates that I've created there for Notion or Evernote. And uh, also I'm going to be talking about Todoist in a little while as well, because that's an app that I'm still utilizing quite a bit for uh, task management for things that are a little bit trickier to track inside of Notion at this point. So make sure to check that out. Subscribe to my channel here if you would like. And if you want updates about the stuff that I'm doing and the stuff that I am putting out, the resources, the tutorials and whatnot, subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, right now I'm calling it the Sunday Dispatch. And my goal is to put out an email newsletter once a week with some inspiration, some tools, some tutorials, and some stuff just to help you better optimize your own life in the way that I'm trying to optimize my life, utilizing all of the great information that is available out there, trying it, and then reporting back to all of you what has worked for me, and also sharing examples of stuff that hasn't worked as well. So that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for checking it out. I hope to see you back in the next one. Take care.